In this video, we're going to focus on the chart.js array sort method for integer values or any values at all, anything related to numbers. So we already understood in the previous video that the sort method will sort data, but specifically on uh, alphabetic order. So on string value with alphabetic order. However, in our case now, we want to not uh, have a ascending or descending structure of uh, or sorting method for the string, but specifically on any integer or number. So we need to do some adjustments. And understanding this is quite powerful, but also interesting to look under the hood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in here a new item here. We're going to create a new function. And this function basically will be our sort integer uh, value I guess if we look at here reverse value so sort integer value all right so in here we're going to create the following function and this is what we're going to do so first of all we're going to use the sort method so we will still be sorting but we're going to use some more items here what are we going to sort well basically we're going to sort the data so we have our data set but to do this we need to make sure we we slice it first slice this letter S and L slice. Reason why is we need to duplicate the array as what we did previously, and then we will start to use that, and then we can sort that out. All right. So what we're going to do is now instead of the label, we're going to work with the data. So we say data dot slice, and what we want to do is we want eventually also a constant here. This can be constant. Uh, sorted data number two i'll just give it a data number two let me say here data slice so basically we have now our nice new array with the data values so what we want to do next is basically sort this data too and then we're going to create here we will add some items in here so what we need to do is here first is to create a nameless function meaning we just say a function and then in here we're going to put in two parameters the letter a comma letter b but it can be anything else you want it does not matter as long as you have two specific parameters and these parameters will eventually be compared with each other so what we're going to do is we want to return the comparison of a minus b so you might wonder what's going on here what is this exactly well the answer is very straightforward here Let's put in here a semicolon. And this is quite interesting. So the understanding this under the hood is really interesting because here's this. So you have basically here sorting, but the sorting function or method only understands uh, alphabetic characters. So what, what it needs to do is need to convert these to string of the numbers. It understands now there's a number, but to compare it, it needs to calculate from each other or deduct from each other. So basically here, let's get our array or our numbers here, our data numbers or our array of values. This is basically what happens here. It makes multiple calculations. This is in short what's going on here. It says A, all right, A is 12. So it will do this, A minus 19 equals, and then you see here, minus seven. The next one would be, it does it again. It will say here, uh, 12 minus, minus three equals what is that that is nine sorry i'm kind of slow at this moment and then we have 12 minus 5 equals 7 and doing this not only for this number here but we will run through all of these and compare them all together so it makes basically uh, 50 or uh, easily 100 well, easily 50 plus calculations just to calculate all the combinations and once it have those combinations it can understand all right this is apparently lower compared to 19 because the value is number seven. But it understands here, this value is higher than three because this is number nine. And we know that this one is higher, but not higher, or this is higher than this, but not, low, uh, not more than this because of all these numbers here, all the results here. So this is quite interesting because it basically looks through all these calculations until it knows the comparison of these and it compares every item of all these values together 
in a matter of seconds that we don't even notice. So the person who make that formula is to be honest quite brilliant in figuring out how you can convert something what is alphabetic into a number or a integer uh, sorting. All right, so enough about under the hood. So now you understand what we're doing here. And these are not any more what we call mumbo jumbo terms. This is really important so you have the understanding. All right, so now we have this. Let's start and do a console log on this. Put this in here, save that. And let's check our results. Of course, nothing shows because I realize we are in a function, but our function has not been activated. So we're going to go up here. I'm going to create a new quick function. And this function, we'll just copy this. And then that, we have the integer here, integer value. All right. Let me say here, sort integer is ascending. It doesn't matter so much for now. Let's save that. And if we click on this, you can see now it's on ascending order. All right. So we could even do the same here in descending order by just converting this from A and B. Then we say here we want the largest value first and then the lowest value last. So if we do this, you can see here this. Then we get again. We press here again. And then we say here, sort in, press on the button. You see here 19, 12, 5, 3, 3, 2. All right. So that is a descending order of uh, filtering. So now we've got that. We know these structures. We can start to work with what we really need, and that is eventually to connect them back here with this here. So we have all of these constants here that we could use. We could just basically copy them here in this case. We're going to copy all of this. But what we're going to do is we're going to remove the sorted data. Sorted data has been already resolved. We have the sorted background, sorted border, but what we also need is the const. Then we say here, sorted. Um, this is not the name, this is the labels. And I would just put a number two here because normally constants should not be with multiple values. It's not a, not a recommended thing or practice. All right, so we have this. Now we have this one here. What we need to do is now, basically, we're going to create here the for loop again. What we're doing here is again, we're going to, com uh, we're going to count again the amount or the length of labels. And then we start to organize them. But now instead of getting the matching data points, we're going to get the matching labels here. So we say here for loop. Then we say here i equals zero. Then we say here we keep on iterating this until it is, well, as long as it is smaller than r. Uh, well, we can do our labels. Is it the labels? It doesn't matter. Even we can even do the sorted data. I guess we can say here sorted data. If it's smaller than a sorted data length, and then every time we will have an incremental value of one plus one on the i. All right, got that. Now in here we're going to do basically this here. We say here we can always copy this one here. However, it's just this. So we have the labels. We say here sorted data. Well, or not even sorted data, but we should have here the data points, right? Exactly the same here. So this should not be sorted data, but say the data dot index of, and then here because it's basically the opposite of here. Let me say your sorted data i. All right. So once we have this, so basically we'll start to find the comparison. This is why we have the slice here. The next one will be. We have the values here. So we say here, we're going to get the sorted label too. And then we say here, push, because what we're going to do now is once we got that, we need to push the specific value in here. And the specific value is matched with labels. And in here, the labels, we have the following. We say here, data dot index of. And then we get here, and we get, say here, that, well, if you look here, the sorted labels here, I'm just checking here above as well, because it's slightly confusing sometimes. It's a really tough one. And here is the sorted labels. And then we say here, I, well, this is not really sorted labels. I realize this is not sorted labels, it's sorted data. Sorry. Sorted data, I. Because we're going to get it from the base of our data that we sorted. Here. All right. So once we've got that, we're basically done with this. 
But what we can do here is just a quick update. We can do here the update just similar here. All we do is the uh, following. We have this here. Let's see here. This is the function. All right. Once we are here, we say here my chart dot update. So update this. But of course, what we need to do as well is we need to reassign the data points here. So we're going to reassign the data points and reassign the labels as well. Um, let me check here. I see that this one was forgetting the array value. We had to create an array on here on the labels. All right. And then in here, we'll just say the following. So we're going to get the items we want to adjust. So if we go here above, we say here on um, my chart data, data sets, and then we can do the data, but also the labels here. It's my chart data labels. All right. So before, before the update is in my chart data dot data sets zero because it's index zero and then we can say data equals data set two. So that's our sorted data. That's number one. Once we did that, the next item what we want to do is the following, which will be we can copy this, say here, and now we look here at the data data. Um, this will be not the data sets. Let's double check here. We have to go to labels, go up, up, up. Sorry, there's a lot of code here, I realize. Maybe I have to clean it up. My chart data labels. All right, scroll down again. My chart data labels. And this will be eventually labels number two. If I update this, let's see. And maybe I realize that maybe we need to get this part here. See if this have to be incorporated in here. So refresh here and we sort them. Let's see what's going on. All right, it works. It starts to sort them in value. It gets the value of two. Red is 12. Red should be 12, that is correct. There you are. All right, so that works exactly as I expected, or as I hoped for. So now what we can do is exactly the same here. Let's copy this. But instead of labels, is background. And then we get here. Uh, this will be not labels, but this will be background. Color is capital C. There's an index of sorted data, and this is data. That's all right. Same story here. Paste this in here, and this will be uh, sorted borders. There's a here. I um, I noticed that I didn't. I misspelled here. Watch out for that. There's a border color. Border color. Sorted data too. Fair enough. Everything is correct here. So now. We can do this. I'm going to copy this twice because basically they're very identical except for here. It will be background, background color with capital C equals the background color number two. And then finally we have here the border color or sort of border two, this sort of border, and this will be uh, border color. All right. So once we did that, we save this, refresh, let's sort them on it. Oh, let's see, background color is not defined. Let's double check what's going on here. Background color equals background color two. Background color is not defined. So what did I miss here that is created a error? Um, background color here, sorted this background color. Background color, push background color here. Um, what is going on here? I realize that this is probably a mistake. All right. All right. So this is the mistake here. And the reason why is I'm just, I realize that I'm going to, I'm using these commands here, but our push should not be on this because it should be on the value here, the constant that we have above here. We just background color with a small c and I was copying this here without paying too much attention, just going too fast through the motions. So we can just do this one. So we get the constant with a small letter c. So I guess here I need to really pay attention in how I do my uh, naming conventions. And this is the same for you as well. Make sure you pay attention to this because this is a mess, of course. And you can see here now I'm getting cut in my own mess. Uh, all right. Got that here. We've, all right, I solved this now, but this one here is correct because this is just still the background color here. What I'm talking about is the following. Let's go up here. My chart, data, data sets, and a background color. We see, well, this one is a constant, which is small. All right, save that. Once we save this, refresh. We can now have this one here. We have yellow, yellow. All right, beautiful. 
let's refresh again. Uh, you see we have twice yellow. I don't know exactly why. Um, well, we can figure that one out eventually. It doesn't matter for now. However, now this works accordingly. The only thing what I will do here is what if you would like to convert this? For example, we have the sort here. And what if you will do instead of sort, we want to do AB. Or instead of AB, we want to have a descending order. Right now we have a ascending order. Let's do the descending order as well. And you say here, descend, uh, descend. All right. So I'm going to copy this all and then put it in here as well. We say here, integer. Now we say here, descend. Uh, we say here, sort descend. Save that. Go down here. Let's double check here and then save all of this. I'm going to check as well. One thing here is why do we have the yellow added up here? Most likely, we have somewhere added a push of certain values. I will check that later on why we have a double yellow, but that's all right for now. Refresh, sort int, all right, and descend. Oh, I have to refresh as well. Um, descending didn't work because we didn't do B, A. All right, so you could see that this was the only reason why. Save that, refresh, and now if you descend, there we are, and then there we are. All right, that looks beautiful. So now what I want to do is, final item here, and this was a quite long video as well, is figuring out what's going on with the yellow. Yellow, I have two yellow, and I can't explain why. And I think that will be a very nice video for me uh, to figure out. What I will do is I will cover that in the next video, just to check what's going on here. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you enjoy it. And if you enjoy this video, you probably will enjoy this one as well. And if you're interested in Chart.js, check out in the description box the link directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.